Number one gives us two polygons and it wants us to select all the sequences below that will take figure P onto figure Q. So letter A says we're just going to do a 180 degree rotation around point A. And so one way we can see that this is wrong is that this angle is going to be the one that rotates around. So A is going to stay as a fixed point, while angle A down in this polygon is not corresponding to angle A in um, polygon P. So that's not going to work out. B wants us to rotate 60 degrees counterclockwise. So it wants us to rotate this 60 degrees, which will line up B, A, and F, A. And then it wants us to reflect over this F, A line. So again, this angle is going to reflect down onto this angle, and they are not corresponding. So this is not going to be a good sequence. Letter C says translate so that A is taken to J. So we're going to take and move point A down to J. Then reflect over line BA, which is this line here. And if we reflect over that line, we see that it does land on polygon Q. So this one is going to be good. And then if we move that back, let's reflect over line BA first. So now we're going to reflect over BA first. And then we're going to translate on directed line segment BA. So that means we're going to go from B, move B down to A. And you can see that that polygon exactly lands on Q again. So letter D is good. Um, then for part E, we start with a reflection over BA again. So this purple polygon. Then it wants us to rotate it 60 degrees around point A. So again, this angle A is staying set here. So this angle is staying set, which means it's supposed to land, it's going to land on this angle and those are not corresponding. So that one's gonna be bad. All right, number two is talking about the semaphore alphabet and shows us these flags. And it says, this is how we sign the letter Q. And we wanna describe a rotation that will take the L flag to the R flag. So there's going to be multiple different ways you could do this. The one that stands out to me is going to be first that I need to rotate counterclockwise. And so let me just type this out. So rotate counterclockwise 135 degrees since um, right here would be about would be 90 and this is half of 90 so 45 and so that's going to rotate this flag over okay so we're going to be rotated here and then the flag is going to be like this so um rotate counterclockwise 135 degrees we also need a center of rotation so i'm just going to say um around the shoulder then we're going to need to get the flag on top of each other. So then um, reflect across the R flag. So then we'll just reflect over this flag and then the L will be right on top of the R. Number three, match the directed line segment with the image of polygon P being transformed to Q. So remember, we start at P and we end on Q. So I've drawn these little arrows on here so that we can just match them. So we see in A that it's kind of going up and to the right a little bit. Whoops. So let's grab that and set it down. Now, I would just set it kind of on the P to Q dot. You can put it anywhere you want, but looks like it matches up with translation um, two. So A goes with two. Um, this one is more severe up into the right. So if we look for a P on the bottom, Q on the top, we see that that goes with translation three. So B went with three. C is going downward to the left, so the P is going to be higher than the Q, so we can see that in translation 4. And that leaves um, tr translation 1 to go with D. Number 4 
Number four, draw the image of the quadrilateral when it's translated by this directed line segment V. So remember, um, you can just kind of come up with a pattern. You could put tracing paper here. Um, you could just count it. So I kind of count the number of triangles, one, two, three. So you could just do that same idea from each point. So one, two, three will give you the new dot. Um, I can actually just grab this segment and set it on each point so we can see where it goes to, which would be the idea that you would get if you were using tracing paper. You could just set the tracing paper on each point and see where it would land. Whoops. And then you'll just connect those and then label them um, with their primes. And remember that it's a rigid, a translation is a rigid motion. Um, so the shape should not change size. So it should look nearly identical, just in a different place on the grid. So A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Number five is giving you a line. They want you to plot two points, A and B, that stay in the same place when reflected over a line. So if they're going to stay in the same place when reflected over this line, they need to be on the line. So you can put A and B wherever you want. They just need to be on the line. And then two other points, um, C and D, that do move when they're reflected. So those just need to not be on the line. They can be anywhere. So I'm going to put C over here and I'm going to put D over here, but these could be anywhere. Your A and B just need to be on the line. Your C and D need to be not on the line. Number six, here are three points in a plane. Select all straight edge and compass constructions needed to locate a point that's the same distance from all three points. Um, so remember that it's a perpendicular bisector. So if I just kind of draw a segment here and just label this J and K, if I do the perpendicular bisector of that, that's all the points that are equidistant from J and K at the same time. So we would need to be constructing a couple different perpendicular bisectors so that they would intersect. And then we could find a point that's the same distance from all of them. So if I were to just kind of sketch that. So if I were to do the perpendicular bisector of AB, and then I were to do the perpendicular bisector of say CB, it doesn't matter which two. Um, once you get the perpendicular bisector, then the point that you find is equidistant from all three. Since this would be the same distance from C and B, this one would be the same distance from A and B, so all three would be the same. So that's what we're looking for. Um, so we don't need an angle bisector. Do not need an angle bisector. Construct the perpendicular bisector of BC. We would need to do that. Construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. We would need to do that. And then that would be it. The intersection would give us the point. So you don't need to do a perpendicular line through the point. Okay, we want the perpendicular bisector, not just through a specific point. Number seven, the straight edge and compass construction shows um, quadrilateral ABCD. Is ABCD a rhombus? So remember, a rhombus um, would mean all sides are congruent. So that's what we need to prove. So let's take a look here um, at this diagram. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of color to help us. So I want to look at the circle um, that's around point C. Whoops. So let's take a look at the circle centered at C. So we've got this circle. Okay. And so this circle is going to allow us to see that... Um, segment BC and CD are equal because they're both radii of the circle. So let's go ahead and type that out. So CB equals CD because they are radii of circle C. All right, so we know that. Um, and then let me just get this in a different color here. 
Okay, so then um, if we take a look then at circle B, I want to look at next. So circle B here, oops, that did not change color. Okay, so circle B here has a radius of BC and BA. So BC and BA are radii of that circle. BC is also in the green circle. Um, so those two circles are the same size, which is important because then their radii are the same size. So um, BC is the radii of both circle B and C. So the circles are congruent. BC and BA, BC equals BA because, well, actually, why don't we just say, therefore, BC equals CD equals AB. So those are the three radii we've looked at. Okay, so therefore, BC, CD, and AB are all equal since they are radii of congruent circles. So we've got three of the sides are the same now. So now we just have to prove um, this final side here. So this um, AD. So let's take a look at one more circle in here. And so we've got um, circle A here. And um, circle A has radii of AB, which is the same as the purple, and then AD. So since um, so AB is a radii of circle A and B, so therefore circle A and B are congruent. Okay, so since all three of those circles are congruent, therefore AB equals B, C equals C, D equals A, D because they are all radii of congruent circles. Therefore, A, B, C, D is a rhombus because all the sides are the same.